Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a synth DIY guy. Welcome to part 2 of my Erica Synth DIY Voice 2 kit review series. Today we're looking at the mixer, the envelope generators and the polyvox filter. These are the easiest builds in the bundle, so I actually recommend that you start with them, especially if you're a beginner. But do watch the previous video on the VCO first. The mixer is a very simple utility. It has three inputs with attenuators and two outputs. Building it is easy, it's a single board for both circuit and control, and uses very few components. Print out the component placement PDF, place and solder low profile components first, and progress towards taller components. Start with resistors and diodes, then IC socket, then the capacitors. Don't solder the panel components before checking their alignment with the panel. Remember to check the polarities on the diodes, caps and the IC. Check for shorts in the power connectors before plugging it in, and it should work okay. It's an AC coupled audio mixer. If you want to use it for CV, skip C1, C2 and C3 and bridge their pads. The envelope generators are really cool. Also easy single board builds. They have features not usually found in traditional ADSR generators, like the G-delay output, a gate which goes high after the attack stage, allowing for chaining many envelopes to trigger each other. They also have a cycle switch, making them into LFOs, the gate input is normaled high, and the cycle mode only engages when gate is high. So with nothing plugged in, the switch alone makes it cycle. But if you plug in a gate, it will act like a synchronized LFO. Great for wub 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 based type sounds. Building it is almost as easy as the mixer, but it does have a lot of standing resistors. Place those after soldering the IC sockets. Pay close attention to all the values and don't make any mistakes. Replacing wrong resistors on these boards may result in lifted pads and broken traces and can lead to further problems. As usual, take your time and concentrate. I was surprised how easy it was to build this awesome filter. It's also a single board, a wider one with more components than the envelope generator, but still very simple. It comes with a pair of the same tin can op amps which were used in the filter for the original Polyvox. It has two CV inputs with attenuators, a bandpass lowpass switch, and it self resonates, producing a clean sine wave when feedback is high. It does not track 1V per octave, but sounds very nice as a percussion voice or untuned oscillator. Again, take great care not to get any values confused, and make sure to check for power shorts before you plug it in. Calibration is simple, just a single trim pot to set the cutoff pot range. I've been using this filter a lot in my day job as a composer. I just love the character it brings to bass, lead and effects patches. The sound is very unique, often distorted and aggressive. Now let's check these modules out in action. Here's some filtered white noise. Now let's bring up the resonance and hear that sine wave. Here come the oscillators, saw wave first. Square wave.
Now let's mix both waves together. Some envelope action. One envelope generator is triggered by the sequencer and the other is in psycho mode acting as an LFO. Bring in some white noise in the mixer. Tweak the cycling envelope generator a bit. Let's trigger one envelope generator from the other's G delay output. Play the keyboard a little. Send the keyboard gate into the cycling envelope generator and hear that synced LFO. That's it for today. Next week we'll take a look at the MIDI to CV, the modulator and the VCA. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel and stay noisy.